are we closer to nuclear war this morning than we were this time yesterday? Because Putin has repeatedly rattled the nuclear sabre since invading Ukraine. He's done it mm -hmm. about five times. Every time he thinks the West is stepping a bit more into the conflict, he talks nuclear. Should we take this more seriously than the previous threats? I must admit, I'm not worried. I wouldn't want to be complacent. No. But he's just making threats, producing documents. Is he really going to use nuclear weapons? It would be retaliation if and he where? did. Where would he and go? Also, yeah, if you used a nuclear weapon in Ukraine, Russia is very close to Ukraine, so the radioactive fallout would, uh, would hit uh, Russia as well. No, I think he's bluffing. The reason that, of course, everyone's... Well, you're not, but others are mm. worried... <laughs> is because President Putin updated a doctrine about what would trigger a nuclear attack, and he's basically lowered the threshold to allow the use of nuclear weapons in retaliation for attacks on its territory. Like, 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 like he needs to change any bit of paper, <laughs> effectively, yeah. To, yeah. to decide whether he will or won't. This is a dictator, a despot. Mm. He doesn't care about conventions or... Inter that is for the birds. If he if he if if he goes nuclear against the United States, because it's Ukraine has launched a long range missile from the United States, he takes on six NATO, which mm. has got sixteen times the firepower mm. of Russia. But Kevin, why does um, President Putin even want to threaten nuclear weapons? I mean, it, nuclear weapons are a disaster yeah. Yeah. for the entire world. Nobody in their right mind would think about launching a nuclear war. So what is it in President Putin's mind yeah. that he keeps putting this idea out there? Yeah, nine countries in the UK uh, have them. Most countries in the world don't. Uh, I would like... Uh, the number of warheads are fewer now than they were in the, in the 1980s. Mm. <clears throat> but still, you could blow up the world several times yes. over mm. if they were uh, all used. I think it's because he feels threatened by <clears throat> the Americans and probably France and uh, the UK to follow, allowing long-range missiles to be fired into Russia, and he realises that in this war, his invasion of Ukraine... It's losable. ..will begin, yeah, will begin yeah. to turn the <laughs> screw on him, because if you can hit ammunition dumps, as the Ukrainians have with a, with a Russian missile, mm -hmm. if you can hit aircraft before they take off, if you can hit the bases that are firing the missiles and the drones, mm -hmm. you lose uh, an advantage. I, I, think mean, the broad, it's I think the broader worry isn't surely the fact that until fairly recently it was a given uh, amongst the great powers that nuclear weapons would only ever be used in response to a nuclear yep. strike. And now he's talking about using them in response to a conventional strike, yep. fairly small warheads. And I guess the issue there is, and you drill really deep into the whole nuclear conundrum that, that we've lived with, mm -hmm. you know, for the last half a century, is that if a system can go wrong, ultimately it will go wrong. And we've got, you know, mutually assured destruction, which has kept us safe for so long. And now you see it corroding at the edges with this kind of ridiculous rhetoric. But it is, it is rhetoric, but it is actually ap applicable to nuclear power. And it is kind of long-term worrying. Yep. Because, as I say, that, that is the theory, that if something can go wrong, it will. Well, and the, the, the bit I worry about most is the fact that the North Korean troops are now involved <laughs> with, with, with Russia... It, on the side of so Russia. So that alliance Ukraine. looks like it's strengthening, yes. doesn't it? Yes, yeah. and, and, and the bloke who's in charge of North Korea is a, is a lunatic. There's no doubt about it. He's mad, a despot. I mean, I think Putin's fairly mad, but in, in a controlled way. I don't think the bloke in North Korea is at all. And, and he is developing nuclear technology. That is the bit that's worrying. But I think that is why... Yeah. I think that is probably why um, Biden has authorised this strike. Um, I think, and I'm sure uh, Starmer and the French are going to go the same way to effectively put North Korea back in its box. But I think that's what's changed yeah. things. N nukes are the ultimate <clears throat> weapons of mass destruction. I think the world would be a better place if we got rid of them all. There's only nine countries, as I say. There's us, there's France, there's Russia, there's the US, there's Israel, there's North Korea... Uh, Iran India, getting them, India and, so North Korea. and Pakistan. I think there are nine, nine countries. And course, but if you've, got, if you've got them and you can use them as a... De a deterrent, you can also use them offensively. That is yeah. the problem. What about the argument that they've kept the peace? That without nuclear weapons right sure. now, we probably would have had a World War Three, a conventional World War I III, think that's right. Like World War Two or World War One. Uh, I think there are other reasons why we haven't had uh, World War Three, and that's, I think, because mo most countries ac accept that peace is, uh, mm. 
is safer and more prosperous, actually, than having a And do you think uh, a knock-on effect of what Putin said yesterday and keeps saying is to perhaps encourage countries like Iran uh, to speed up their race to get a, a nuclear weapon? Because they'll be thinking, well, if Putin is able to get away with threatening using nuclear weapons and look at what that can do for him, we could, we could be in well, the same Well, if it, look, the 2003 invasion of Iraq by the US, UK and others was not a disaster. Would Saddam Hussein have been invaded if he had nuclear weapons? <laughs> uh, of course, it would... Probably not, no. in truth, which for somebody like me who is a disarmer, uh, I'm afraid, is, is one of those arguments you can't completely ignore, that mm. they can be a deterrent. Really and well, mm. it's, pretty, it's, pr it's pretty horrific to actually have to accept that because yeah. okay. the fear of mankind is always in the balance. Well, let's put those fears of yeah. nuclear war mm. on ice this morning mm. um, and <laughs> ask about your, how was your journey into work? Did, did, did you have Fine. to spend a long time... Scraping the ice off your cab? No. <laughs> Was it all done before you arrived? Because it is very, very, it's very icy cold. It's very out cold. there and yeah. particularly worrying. We, we have been talking about this, it feels like, almost every day, but finally the Depart Department of Work and Pensions has delivered its own assessment of what's going to happen as a result of the winter fuel cut. And tens of thousands of pensioners, they admit, are expected to be driven into poverty. And the Welfare Secretary, Liz Kendall, disclosed the figures in a letter to the House of Commons Work and Pensions Committee. According to the latest, DWP modelling the means testing of winter fuel payments um, will lead to 50,000 more pensioners being pushed into relative poverty and around 100,000 more pensioners being pushed into relative poverty uh, by the end of the decade. I mean, this is devastating. Yeah. Their own figures... Labour government! Yeah, their own oh, yeah. figures. <laughs> yeah. They've only yeah. been in power five flipping minutes. This is their own... Their own statistics how and their could, own government. How could a Labour government oh, no. go into power yeah. and uh, and say, as and a Susanna, result of our cuts, pensioners are going to go into poverty? And, and, the whole point was to did, take away winter and, fuel and, payments from those who could afford to pay the, their bills. The budget took place months after they got into power. They got into power in July, on July the 4th, July the 5th. The budget was, what, last month. They had all that time to do the research. They could have done this work with the Work and Pensions Department any time. Mm. They could have said, if you do this... But they ploughed on relentlessly. It's wicked. That's, That's what it is. That, it is wicked that, and stupid. That that hundred thousand is one percent of the ten million who've lost up to three hundred pounds. But it's a key test of a Labour government. Mm. Yeah. Whether people, whether poverty, whether poverty falls, not rises. Mm. It's falling out. On it, the it, it rises. It, it rises under the Tories, but Labour's supposed to make it fall. So I'm very, I'm very well. I welcome your concern now. But poverty has risen, particularly amongst children and, mm. to some extent, uh, pensioners under the Tories. But it's a t key test to Labour. Okay. So it's utterly humiliating for a Labour government. So and then you've got the Prime Minister in Rio, you see, banging on about pensions credits. Stop it. Just yeah. reverse it. So our correspondent, Louisa James, asked yeah. the Prime Minister specifically about the winter fuel cuts. Let's have a listen to what he said. On the question of pensioners, it is really important uh, that I make clear that those on pension credit obviously will get the allowance. Um, but what we've done is to stabilise the economy, and that means for state pensions they will go up by about £450, £460 um, early-ish next but year. That's next so year, pensioners isn't it? will be better. Well, it went up this year as well. It's an annual increase. Um, but pensioners will be better off if we stabilise the economy. And I'm not saying that's easy. It was a tough decision. But I mean, a tough decision, which is going to drive pensioners into poverty. By their own, by their own statistics. Yeah. Look, they know in 2017 he was part of the Shadow Cabinet, which put out a, a document which said 4,000 yeah. more pensioners would die if the winter fuel allowance mm. was axed. Would die. Mm. Would die because they'd be yeah. choosing... Uh, they couldn't put the heating on because they couldn't avoid yeah. it. So that was in the full, so what's changed? The full, it's the, nothing. The full, it's just got worse. The full state pension in April goes at 4.1% or £472 a year. That's the full state pension. Not everyone gets that. But you cannot say people are going to be better off because they get that. They weren't they were going to get that anyway. Yeah. Under exactly. the promise of the triple exactly. the triple lot. You've exactly. taken away £300. And, of course, that £472 uh, pounds increase in the state pension, some people will be taxed on it if they've got an it's occupational like... pension because he'll go over <laughs> the £12,500 allowance. Yeah. Given the figures that we're talking about this morning, 
I know that Labour have a huge majority in the Commons and they can do pretty much what they like, but mm. how long can a government in a democracy go on pursuing a policy which more and more is falling apart in terms of the numbers game and which outside Parliament there seems to be no support base for? I can't mm. think of any commentator, left, right or in the middle, over the last two or three months, who've supported this policy. You're on the left and you don't support it. Uh, You're on the right and you don't support you it. Know, the, the Institute of Fiscal Studies did, Paul Johnson, because you could see why it was gone, because there's a lot of what they call dead weight. That's money that goes to wealthy pensioners, yeah. you know, those who might be it might be on quite high incomes. But we're, we're in what Lord Hailsham, a Tory uh, Lord Chancellor, once called the elective dictatorship. And that you elect a, you elect a government, it's got a big majority, mm -hmm. and it can kind do of what it likes. do what it what it wants. Yeah. Uh, but a, but, a, but I, I always think there's a mistake, sorry, a, when it was only elected on 34% of the vote. Yeah, I've, always, exactly. I've always campaigned for fairer votes and changing the electoral mm. system. Labour might have 60-odd percent of the seats, but they only got 34% of the votes on a low turnout. A low turnout. So if it actually 20% of the electorate overall, of the, mm. sorry, the adult population, uh, voted Labour. Mm. So it's only one in five, actually, if you, and, if you and, and bring gonna, it back. But they're going to plough on with this. They are. This, they're not this, showing any signs they of turning They are going to plough on with it, knowing yeah. that older people are going to be driven into poverty. Yes. A Labour government's first budget is driving older people into poverty. And Congratulations, the, Rachel Reeves. We're getting already um, lots of people getting in touch. I'm being bionic on X. My wife has cancer. Her consultant says the heating needs to be on. Yeah, Our course. finances say the heating needs to be off. Oh. Our generation worked to build this country. Labour has destroyed it. Within weeks, Melanie, I'm a pensioner on the full state pension, um, but absolutely no other income whatsoever. My heating isn't on, no more to say, really. Um, Derek says, I'm an ex-serviceman, 18 years in the Royal Navy, struggling to make ends meet. Colin says, I worked for 53 years, no winter fuel payment this year. They promised £450 next year, um, but they're going to take 130 back in tax. So How cold it is today? Look how cold it is today. Yeah. Snow. The, um, what, if we have a, what if this goes on throughout the entire winter? The energy price cap also is due to go up on Friday. Yeah, that's right. So the energy prices from the 1st of January are due to go yeah, up. Yeah, it's, 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 it's mercifully a small amount, although... But if you're struggling, the, the Kevin... Well, but it's less, than, the, less, than three, the, less, than three years, less than three years ago, the price cap was around £1,200. And now it's, what, around £1,700. Mm. That's been a big increase, despite the fact it's come down yeah. from the peaks. And in the meantime, it went up to the average 2,000... Oh. No, typical household, yeah. 2,500 yeah. yeah. But now it's, uh, it's, 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 it's going to cast a long but shadow of everything Labour does. I just want to put one more point that Keir Starmer said to Louisa James, because we're about to get the inflation figures. Yeah. The, Probably going the, up. The rate at which prices have been rising, yeah. that's that's at seven. That is likely, we think, to have gone up Above from the, the last time. Uh, target. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, down from 2022, but mm -hmm. the key point is that up from the last um, time that it was announced. Um, the energy price cap, as I say, due to go up. Um, pensions go up 4.1% in April. Benefits do not go up by anything like that. Benefits are going to increase in April by 1.7%. Yeah. And that's univer including universal credit and child benefit. Mm. So if inflation goes up to 2.2%, mm. oh, that eats away your benefits it, increase. It, it certainly does, and that's, uh, that's some of the poorest people uh, in the country. I thought some of them were supposed to help some, them. Some of them in work, but no, they use the same system the Tories used, or the Tories didn't always trigger it, and that benefits are triggered by the consumer price index that was published last mm. uh, last month. Which it's always was, been the case. Lower, but yeah. pensioners are protected because it's not just inflation. It is then the question of if wages are higher, which they were, so it's four point one percent, or that uh, minimum uh, minimum yeah. two and a half. So it's Louisa a James. System. So no. Louisa James. Just, said no, just to the, yeah. you, pensioners yep. were protected. They're not. They've just taken the winter fuel allowance. No, they, no, they're, yeah. no, they're not protected. We're talking anymore about we're talking about government. the state pension. Sorry, they're not protected by this muppet. government. No. You know what Give we're with talking one hand, about. Take away exactly. with the other. You know what exactly. we were talking no, about. Exactly. We're talking about um, so there. Louisa James asked a very pertinent question to the Prime Minister. Let's have a listen. 
You say things are going to get better, but when? Yes. Well, some of that investment is already coming in, uh, so we're beginning to see the benefit um, of our approach. What I want to do is to make sure that's turned into good, well-paid jobs as quickly as possible and make sure that we keep to our principle that the pay slip in your pocket will not be affected. And at the end of the month, when people look at uh, what they have for themselves, they will see that this is a government that has protected that pay slip, and that's a really important priority for me. Prime Minister, thank you. Mm. When is it going to get better? And we just... I mean, at the moment, I'm not sure people are seeing things no getting answers. better. Well, yeah. I mean, you can't really say when it's going to get better because you does not know, actually, <laughs> in how many could you say yeah, it's going to get better and then you'd, you'd say how and exactly when. Yeah, yeah. where's but the it, growth going to be? <clears throat> uh, well, we when... had massive retailers yesterday saying yeah. that they're and worried the of, about... And, and the, the Bank of England growth. Governor, Andrew Bailey, talking in the House of Commons yesterday, conceded or said that he agreed with the retailers this could have a real impact Wage, wages on, are going prices, up faster than prices. on prices. Wages are going up faster than prices. We had probably the longest uh, pay squeeze on record well, not over anymore, those mate. 14 years. These in, in, they started going up <clears throat> towards the end of the Conservatives. They're still going up, but you're not, not going to be massively, oh. uh, massively better. You don't... The, the, if you, the, if you the, figures, the hike in employers' tax <laughs> is going to depress wages. Even Rachel Reeves' chance has admitted it's going to slow down wages growth. Well, look, it's slow other... growth, so they're still going to go up. They're not. The you other... just said slow growth. Growth is going up. Inflation's off. going up, Kevin. It will be slow. Go it won't, they you will just admitted it. All right. The other headline policy, which they're clearly not going to do, turn on is, uh, is inheritance tax on the farmers. Uh, farmers uh, descended in force in London yesterday. Jeremy Clarkson, their kind of notional head, didn't disappoint in a fascinating and very amusing, actually, interview with the Victoria Derbyshire for the BBC. We're going to show you two clips from this. Uh, let's just see the first one, where Victoria Derbyshire challenged him about his own reasons for getting into farming as a tax loophole. Got the impression... <laughs> got the impression, uh, at the end of, of all the shenanigans yesterday, that... However sort of visual and spectacular the process was, and Clarkson there, you know, leading it in his own extraordinary way, hadn't really made any impact at all on the government. They absolutely weren't giving an inch. No, I think they'd be relieved there weren't, there weren't 20,000. No, there weren't. 13,000. I mean, no. I felt it was a bit 10,000-ish. 10, 10, mm -hmm. It's very hard to, to call it, but I, th I think Jeremy Clarkson is a poor figurehead for them because he did get that in interview in which he said... Avoiding tax, tax was reasons, yeah. critical <clears throat> in his in his decision. The people you, you know, I'm concerned about are the small farmers, the small family farmers who will be impacted. I don't think the numbers are anywhere near what the National Farmers Union claim, but some of them will be impacted, and I have I have sympathy for them. I don't have sympathy for the Clarksons of this world, although I, I did think he looked really quite unwell. I'm sorry to say, and we know he's had mm. heart problems. He talked about almost dying. I was. And his doctor, quite, he said, had shocked. told him not to go yeah, to the march, but he shocked. feels that strongly about it that he wanted to go. Yeah. He also fired a shot at the Prime Minister when he was um, quizzed by ITN. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to have big ears. Well, he, he's got a point. Look, this is Prime Minister. <laughs> the G20, I suppose it's important. Is it important? This is his 15th trip abroad since he's been Prime Minister. Normally... Hang on, Maguire. I'm hang on, like, hang on, <laughs> before you start. Normally, <laughs> Prime Ministers are abroad all the time at the end of their Premiership. This bloke's up on a, pri on a plane all the time. <laughs> There's a lot of problems here. You shouldn't be there? You're saying you shouldn't be there? No, I'm not saying... Look, G20... No, 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 I, I'm saying, it's moaning fine. mini here. Last week, at the back <laughs> of the, the, the COP29, complete waste of time. The only other head he of state was, was Italy and the Taliban. Complete waste of time. <laughs> no, and, he spent, and, it, and, there, and he took 450 people with him <laughs> to a climb, Look, conference about climate change. How much right. of flipping climate? What about your carbon footsteps, Prime Minister? He, waste of time. He inherited. Get back, back to this country and sort he, out the problems yeah, here. Yeah, when, he, when, 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 when he's here, you don't want him here. Being the Prime when Minister. he's not here. It's ridiculous. He's, he's, he's got he's, a foreign secretary, <laughs> although that's probably why he won't. He does go to Bordeaux, because the foreign secretary, David Lammy, is useless. He's inherited most of these trips and his diary. Well, you, yeah. can you can cancel Nate, them, the NATO, He doesn't have Commonwealth, to go. He doesn't have COP, to go. G20, G7. Uh, he has been out of the country rather a, a disproportionate, oh. disproportionate oh. amount of time. Oh. There's no... Concession there's no, here. No, no, uh, but oh. I'm, I'm doing it, it oh. factually. Does it but make him look like an international statesman? No. Who's, you know, 
Makes him look Punching like his weight? Mm, no, I don't think he does yet, actually. Um, I, th I thought when he met the Chinese president, uh, Xi yeah. Jinping, mm -hmm. uh, it was a very cursory handshake from mm -hmm. Xi Jinping. You've got to stop. You've got to. Uh, you've got to work. Who he was. You've got to work. I at agree. It. The body language was interesting, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, but you've got to work sort of to establish it. The and then off turned off away. Them, yeah. Didn't yeah. They? With, a, with but, a scowl. Yeah. yeah. He didn't but, look happy at all. But there's some some on the right of Chris. I mean, you know, you probably will in a minute of not having beaten the Ukraine. See Zelensky as prime minister, but he's had he's had all these summits and you. It's better for Britain to be represented on the international stage mm. and you invest the time now and you will get some clout, hopefully, down the line. OK. Yeah. Um, a lot of parents watching will have some cautious optimism because we're going to hear today government plans to finally tackle the providers of the internet sites which are so toxic for, right. for children. There are children going on there under 13. Uh, there are children certainly going on there between 13 and 16, and the government is looking hard now at, uh, at basically making that impossible and making the, uh, making the providers responsible for not allowing under 16-year-olds on. At least it's a move in the right direction. Richard, there was a summit at Downing Street when David Cameron was Prime Minister. You had Google and all these people there. They were going to get this all sorted. There was going to be um, filters on people's phones and the internet. To, to, so if you wanted to access porn, you had to press a button to get into the port. Nothing happened. Every government since Cameron has been scared of these people. Mm -hmm. They're scared of Google. They're scared of these uh, masters of the universe for some reason because their lawyers are very clever and I suspect this government will be the same. Good luck. Yeah. I wish them well. I want to stop it because they, these, the, what children yeah. are accessing is terrible mm -hmm. but I have yeah. no faith this is going to change I th anything. I, th I think Peter Kyle, science and technology... We're talking to him later. Oh, right. I yeah. think he genuinely believes I'm it. I'm sure he does. I'm sure Cameron just, did. just things said privately and you, you hear. I think he really, really thinks the big Cameron tech... Cameron them but all he, to no, number no, no. 10. But, no, but you, you get some ministers who just have a commitment and others who mm. they will give it a go, but they're not really committed. I think with him, he is genuinely committed. I, I agree, it's a gigantuan job when you're dealing with these great big US tech companies mm. which are very difficult to mm. control. It's, it, it's not easy... But if there's, a, if there's a will, there might be a way. Well, we're going to be talking, to, uh, not for the first time, to the mother of a 14-year-old who's no longer with us. He lost his life. She thinks because of stuff that he was accessing yeah. online, yeah. she cannot get approval from the providers of that material to look at it. Yeah. She, they simply... She, she has no access to her son's records, which is absolutely a disgrace. The only way she might be able to do it, apparently, is to reopen the inquest uh, into his death, mm. which would cost her personally. That's, that's her and her, her boy. It's Ellen oh. and Ellen. Jules. Ellen. Yeah. What a sweet... That boy. would it's cost her yeah. over £80,000 out of her own pocket yeah. Yeah. to reopen the inquest. Uh, just, that, is, that is wicked. Uh, disgraceful. And that's what, this is what the government should be sorting out, because yeah. that is absolutely wicked. You know, there's got to be a debate, actually, about, about should 14-year-olds even be allowed to have a smartphone? They talk about it in Parliament, but I get there will See, be no I, government I, will do I, it. I think they should, because we live in a very well, interconnected technical I'm not a parent, world. So... But it, it is limiting what can be seen. Mm. And I... Look, the, the cops uh, sometimes have difficulty getting information yeah. uh, from, from these companies. Because of these terrible well, companies. But they, all, they all talk about privacy. And privacy is an issue, unquestionably, but in the case of this... this this mother, mother or somebody who's committed a right. serious... She, but she's, she's, but she's, yes. she's not alone, is she, Richard? No. There's oh, so many all, mothers no. who've gone through no. this and fathers have gone through it. It's terrible. Mm. And that's why I wish the government well on this, but I just don't have any faith they're going to do it. No, and it feels like we've been talking about it for oh, exactly. years. I think that Cameron but summit was in 2013. Yeah. But the people Ten years who ago. have the power and the money are the people running these enormously profitable... Making billions, profitable... Susanna, making billions. Yeah, and they're not prepared to give any of it up. companies. Because they yeah. behave, they, they're like pirates. No, your, your, your Elon Musk's and your Facebooks and all that. Just, it's, in the end, they're businesses. Yeah. You've yeah. Got That's Elon, what they are. You've, the bottom line is the, yeah. is the, the dollar sign. Yeah. Yeah. You've but, got Elon Musk now at the, foot, uh -huh. the, foot, the footstep of the, the new president of the United yeah. States. What is it, what's Trump going to say to this bloke? Well, I mean, Elon he, Musk was out it's uh, got. yesterday for oh. this successful test launch of yeah, SpaceX's yeah. Starship rocket. I mean, if you are someone who is hugely concerned about what your children are seeing on Twitter, mm -hmm. you, you might be thinking, honestly, please, yeah. 
use some of this money yeah, yeah. to police your yeah. own yeah, 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 yeah. social media yeah. site better yeah. Yeah. so that look, my kids can't access this And remember, the stu Nick Clegg was like the Deputy Prime Minister of this country, the leader of the Lib Dems. He's got a big job role it's in... Facebook, what is it called uh, now? Facebook Meta? Meta. Now the parent What's company. he doing about it? Yeah. Yeah. What is he doing? Which part of the country are you from, Andrew? My family's Swindon. Swindon, in the south? Yeah. Where, South yeah. Shields and North South East, Shields, right. Yeah. Well, apparently, yeah. according to a new report, you, being a southerner, should be pretty useless at detecting people putting on an accent, a fake accent. You, as a northerner, are much more equipped to tell whether an accent's fake or not. Get yeah. in. So we're cleverer. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically I've what all, you're I've saying. I've always known yeah. that's a fake right, accent. <laughs> Maguire really speaks like an Eton schoolboy. I, I say, old chap. Eton, Eton mess. <laughs> oh, this, this comes from Cambridge University. Um, oh, they well, found that right, people then. from <laughs> Belfast were the most able to tell when somebody's mimicking their accent, whereas people from Essex, Bristol and London were the least accurate at telling when somebody was pretending to be one of them. So you as a southerner, am I putting it on? Yeah, you are. I'm putting it and on. You know who was great at putting it on? <laughs> Tony Blair, when he did interviews, <laughs> when he came on certain TV <laughs> channels, he, he, he stop, spoke yes. estuary English, yeah. didn't he? And, other <laughs> yeah. and when he's on the BBC, very proper, because yeah. he went to Oxford. Yeah. Kevin, yeah. can you do a London accent? Oh, please. Core blimey, strike a light. <laughs> nobody talks. Did, I, yeah, nobody that. talks like that, I know. But my... My yeah. father spoke like that, but a yeah. lot better, can my, I tell my, you? My, my actor daughter can do me better than I can, because she, really? she can do all the different uh, voices. And can you do... Um, Kevin no, no. Oh, hey, man. <laughs> oh, not <laughs> really. Oh, yeah. Could you tell that was fake, Kevin? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, everything actually, about him, actually. Andy, <laughs> Andy, <laughs> mate, Andy, mate, I wasn't putting it on cos I'm from Essex, right? And that's how I used to talk. Right, mate. You know I mean? Which part of Essex? Uh, off Romford. Romford? Yeah, Romford, Romford Ross Green. Yeah, Dagnum my, Road. Well, my mum's Dagnum, so... Yeah, um, Dagnum Road, yeah. yeah. My dad works in Dagnum, Actually, I'm, Ford, in Dagnum. I, don't, I don't like to say, but aren't Romford and Dagenham both in London now? Uh, no, that, well, uh, yeah, no, I'm no, sorry, no. but us proud Essex people... <laughs> Essex, so always So, do you Essex. mean that the London voice Barahaga. you're speaking in right now is put on? OK, my dad was a public school boy, and he, and he lived in Essex, uh, he came back from Canada as a journalist, and he hated... The, the, the drop vowel and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the no T, and I was expected to speak like this at home. So it was a natural way of speaking. Okay. But while I went to school in Rush Green, obviously, if I spoke like that, I got beaten up. So I spoke like this. And so it's like being bilingual. Oh. So I can, <laughs> I can talk. It's not, I'm not putting it on. Richard, I'm dropping into gonna, it, this right? Is gonna, I'm <laughs> dropping <laughs> into it, but I'm, it's not... I'm not acting it right. Richard, um, there's a whole new career opening up for exactly. you here. Yeah, I can and, see it now. Have, so have, I can you, speak have you just been replaced by an AI, AI. hologram? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, uh, yeah. Andrew and Kevin, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, we will see you. <laughs> we will Sadly. see you again.